Good evening, everyone on Instagram and Facebook Live. Welcome to the next Conversations with the Boys. Tonight, we are excited about being back with you. We missed you guys last week um, and are definitely looking forward to tonight's discussion around uh, the power of friendships and um, more or less uh, spiritual Christian friendships and the importance of that um, as we walk this walk and Christian journey. Hello, everybody that's joining us. What's up? Hey, Mom, uh, Francis, how you doing? Good to see all of you joining us tonight. Hopefully, um, you will engage in our conversation. We um, are looking at um, the importance of friendships because God didn't create us to walk this Christian journey alone, and it is very important to um, understand how God views friendships. And I think it's much different um, from what I learned in our research of this than what the world tells us and, and the way that we've actually um, governed ourselves relative to friendship. So I'm really excited about tonight's conversation and looking forward to what the Lord would have us to share and also learn from you as you join us tonight. And please, if you have questions or you have um, feedback, you have input, please uh, share them and we'll try to get to as much of that uh, as we go through tonight's discussion. We'll try to make sure that we're responsive to your um, your online feedback. Hello, everybody that's joining us on, on Instagram as well. So I'm going to ask my wife to pray us in and we're going to jump right into tonight's conversation. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you just for life, Lord. Life yes, is so Lord. precious, God. And as we have seen and witnessed in the news in our communities, God, and all over the world, Lord, people are losing their lives, Lord. Yes. So we don't want to take for granted life, Lord. Yes, Lord. So we just say thank you today, thank you, God. Lord. And before we don't want to forget anything, God. So we say thank you for everything. Yes, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord, so that we can have this conversation tonight. We pray that you would move by your spirit, yes, God. God. Use Please, Jamal God. and I simply as vessels who are willing to do what it is that you have called us to do, Lord. Yes. Let everything that we say and do here tonight be pleasing in your sight, God. Guide and lead us, Lord. We don't want to do or say anything that is not in your will, Lord. So have your way. Have Bless your this way, conversation Lord. now. Bless those who are listening. Bless those who will listen later on, God. And we just pray that it, most of all, that it glorifies you. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And before we get started, thank you, Ebony, for mentioning the um, lives that were lost. I want to send a special prayer and acknowledgement out to the families in, uh, of the victims, as well as the uh, criminals involved in the mass shootings, um, both in El Paso and also in... Um, Dayton, Ohio, which is about 45 minutes away from where we live. Uh, I pray for all of the families involved, but uh, particularly one Facebook friend, not an intimate friend, but somebody who I was uh, connected with through Facebook is one of the victims, Beatrice Warren. want to send a prayer and shout out to her family and um, those who knew her and uh, just want to keep uplifted all of those impacted by these mass shootings that have been going on and as well uh, found out today that another member a former member of Sharon Baptist Church that we know Michael Brooks passed away so want to uh, definitely pray for his wife and children and family and the Sharon Baptist Church family and keep them uplifted in prayer uh, y'all life is so precious and so short and can be snatched from us in a moment either by you know uh, uh, circumstances violence or anything so let's not take uh, for granted the life that we have and I want to also use that as a segue of you know tonight's discussion because sometimes we don't value relationships the way that we should or the way that God intended and uh, mm -hmm. and um, as a result of that um, it impacts our categorization of what God calls friendships. So as we start tonight's discussion, Proverbs 18, 24 is the scripture that we want to focus on. Hey, Miss Karen, thanks for joining tonight. And um, in that scripture, I, you know, God just uses as a theme uh, friendships and relationships throughout the entire Bible, um, starting from Genesis. But um, I want to focus on 
uh, Proverbs 18, 24 is our key scripture for tonight's conversation. And again, feel free to jump in and share and uh, discuss with us as we talk about the importance and the power of friendships. But Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man who has friends must first himself or must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We'll talk about that that passage of scripture in more detail, but I want to set the context for uh, tonight's discussion around friendship because I think that there are some key um, values that we miss because a lot of times um, we misinterpret what a true friend is. And again, I think we look at friendships or relationships through a worldly lens versus a godly lens. And I think if we looked at it from a godly lens, we would have more friends. Amen. Amen. And again, in Proverbs uh, 20, uh, 18, 24, it really solidifies that because a lot of our relationships are dependent upon us and how we present ourselves. Because again, it says a man who has friends must himself be friendly. Yeah. And if we are friendly, then we will attract that which we are. Amen. And if we're unfriendly, we will attract that which we are. So I think that God speaks to us in a, in a very unique way relative to friendships. Just a couple of things. I think the Bible from the uh, very beginning talks from creation um, about relationships. And the first relationship was between God and Adam and the friendship that was created there. And I'll talk about why that is a friendship versus just a relationship between God and his creation. Because God said, if you do these things which I command, you are my friend. So when we are obedient to God and we're following God's commands, God calls us his friend and not just um, his servant or his creation. And that is important because God elevates our relationship with him when we are obedient to him. Amen. So with that creation, we fractured our relationship or our friendship with God when we disobeyed him. So when sin crept into the garden, it broke the friendship or broke the or fractured the relationship that Adam had with God and the ultimate true friendship that he had with him. So in the beginning, Adam and Eve enjoyed the fullness of friendship with God, but it was their sin which led them into hiding. You know, when they uh, discovered that they had sinned and, and they, they understood the, um, the revelation of what God had allowed them to understand by knowing the, um, the, the, the impact of their sin, they went and covered themselves with fig leaves. So, and then they started hiding behind what they had done, which impacted their ability to be free and vulnerable and open in their friendship and relationship with the Lord. And at that time, again, we've been trying to recover ever since. And that is where God wants to show us how to live, I believe, through reconciliation for relationships. I think that when relationships are broken, and this is biblically speaking, um, God wants us to restore all relationships because again, God told us to love one another. And in loving one another, we are mimicking God, Ephesians 5 and 1, being imitators of God. So when we do what God tells us to do, which is what Proverbs um, was, I'm sorry, there's another scripture that talks about when we do what God commands, he calls us friend. And I'll get to that uh shortly. But when we do what God calls us to do and we follow his commands, he calls us friend. And then a person who is friendly must, uh, uh, who has friends must first prove him or herself to be friendly. Mm -hmm. And then we attract that which we are, but we should be imitating God and doing what God commands, which is to love one another. And God didn't specify who the other was. He says, love one another. Mm -hmm. So that means that everything that God created, we ought to love. And we ought to put ourselves in a position of showing ourselves friendly to those whom God has created, whom he has commanded us to love. Amen. Um, secondly, it is um, God restoring true friendship. Uh, he restores friendship with himself. Or he did that with a number of biblical characters uh, or figures or uh, examples like Enoch and Noah who walked with God, who was in the Hebrew expression, that was a Hebrew expression of true friendship. And you can find that in both Genesis uh, 5.24 and Genesis 6 and 9. 
uh, Abraham, who was called a friend of God, and that's spoken of in Isaiah 41, verse 8. Moses, who spoke with God face to face as a man uh, speaks with his friend. That's found in Exodus uh, 33, 11. And uh, God draws near to those who call upon him with true faith. This is so critical about the relationship that we have with God. And again, if we're imitating the relationship that we have with God, that gives us the posture of how we ought to be imitating that in our human relationships as well. Amen. Um, and finally, you know, the ultimate is that, you know, Jesus came as the great friend of sinners. And in that, he befriended all who trust and follow him. So he came to lay down his life for his friends, which is found in John chapter 15, verses 13 through 15. That's the most critical point because that is the true demonstration of a friendship, mm -hmm. that you would lay down your life for your friend. And those who Jesus calls friend are those who obey and follow him. And again, that's a specific group of people. And Jesus came to save all, but our responsibility is to believe in him through salvation and give our lives to him so that he is not just our savior, but he's our friend mm -hmm. and he's our brother as it relates to our relationship with God, the father. So I will stop there just in the context, um, but I wanted to make sure that we had a spiritual um, settling, uh, leveling before we got into the discussion around friendships, because again, relationships are how God established the world. He did not call us to be in solitude. God called us to have friends and have relationships with people. And that's evidence in Genesis um, chapter 2, verse 18, where the Bible says, And the Lord God says, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So when God created that relationship, friendship, it was for companionship and partnership. Meaning that there is not, you know, it, God said it's not good for man to be alone. So when we walk around talking about, you know, I'm self-made, I don't need nobody, I'm all by myself, we're going against what God says. And all of us have said that at some point. I myself am guilty of that. But learning what um, relationships and friendships are centered around from God's way is the way that we ought to move forward. Amen? Amen. Have you I was just going to say, sometimes, too, I think that we use that term friend so loosely. Um, and I've learned over the years as I've gotten older that that's not a title that I give to everyone, right. if I'm real. I mean, because there are certain qualities of a true friend. I mean, even the scripture in Proverbs eighteen twenty four. if we look at the, you know, there's different versions. I I really liked how the NIV hey, version says a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than, than a brother. Than a brother. Mm -hmm. So to me that, you know, spoke volumes. I, I have a lot of acquaintances, but I have very few friends. Amen. And um, the scripture to me just proves it that, you know, if you have one good friend, that's better than having a bunch of superficial acquaintances. Right, right. Um, <laughs> And honestly, you don't need a lot of friends. If you have a lot of friends, that's awesome. You, you're blessed. But even if you just have one good friend, that's a blessing. Because a friend is somebody that's going to go through you through all seasons of life. Right. You know, no matter where, what you're going through, whether you up, whether you down... And, you know, that brought me to the scripture today, Romans twelve fifteen. This is the NIV version. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Mm -hmm. For me, that's important. That's an important quality of a friend. And I believe that I'm that type of friend. Like, if you are sad, then I'm taking that on. You know, right. I, I'm sad too because this is hurting you. It, when you're celebrating, you got a new job. Even if I'm unemployed, I'm going to be happy for right. you. I'm not going to sit back and be like, hating like, oh, you know, well, I don't got a new job. She got a new job. No, that's not what friends do. Right. And that's, you know, I think that that's why it's so important to understand relationships from God's perspective. Because God teaches us how to categorize those relationships. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed pulling from this lesson is that 
no matter how other people are towards you, we should be friendly. We should be friendly and right. we should always conduct ourselves as a friend receptive to a friendship. Amen. But when other people don't match up or line up or meet those characteristics of what a true friend is, mm -hmm. that shouldn't dictate how much of how a true we friend we are. Right. And that's, you know, again, going back to um, Proverbs 18:24. It is, you know, again, a man who has friends is himself first friendly, you know, and I think that that's what's important. You attract that which you right. are. But and I think it also speaks to um, uh, just being selfless. Again, having, right. you know, what is it that I can do with, for that person? You right. know, I have some friends where, you know, others might look at it and feel that it's one sided. Because I'm always the one giving, giving, giving. But what I found is I'm not going to let that change who I am right. because of their response or lack of response to, right. you know, what I do for them. Because when you do something for somebody or there for somebody or whatever, you know, if it's truly genuine and from the kindness of your heart, you're not looking for anything in return. Well, you know, and it's funny you said it because part of what um, is in one of the points that I wanted to make is the protection of friendships. So when you talk about the protection of friendships, a lot of times we often um, view or treat relationships like consumers, right? So we are looking at that as transactional when in, in essence of relationship is, is, is um, more... Um, not consumer based but covenant based mm -hmm. or contract based because you are establishing a commitment to one another that goes beyond an expectation Amen. and when you establish that foundation with someone it's i'm in this to deliver what it is that i'm supposed to deliver mm -hmm. as as a friend going back to proverbs 18. Amen. So I'm not looking for anything in return, but oftentimes we do. And that's what fractures relationships mm -hmm. because if you're the giver all the time with an expectation, expectation that, yeah. man, you know what? I'm not getting anything back. You start to become frustrated and then you start, uh, start to resent the person. And then you start to get into this. Well, you know, you don't do for me what I can do for you, but that's not how the Lord treats us. Amen. The Lord calls us friend, but knowing that there's nothing that we can do for the Lord except for worship him, you know, and that's, that's the expectation, but we can't give enough. We can't do enough. We right. can't, there's nothing that we can do to out friend what Jesus did when he laid his life down mm -hmm. for us. So if you're not willing to equally lay your life down for him, mm -hmm. then you can't match his friendship. And but I think too, it also goes back to, it's so important to pray about your friendships and oh, pray yes. about the people that God sends in your life. So yeah. you have those divine connections because a lot of times in relationships like that, I'll have moments where I feel like, God, I'm, you know, I'm giving all this, like, but it's something that's, that's, that's holding me there. And it's like, God is saying to me, no, there's something that you have to give that they need. Right. Right. You know, so and we, that, can't, yeah. we can't look at it like, oh, well, I'm not getting such and such back or they're not doing this. or I'm always doing this, doing that. No. But that's, know? oh my God. And that, that is so powerful because that is why. I think, again, what, what was revelation for me and also confirmation of, you know, relationships that I have. So as I started going through this, I started thinking about true friendships, you know, true relationships that you have that imitate what the Bible is talking about here. And I think, you know, what was so encouraging to me is that I had, it, you know, uh, to your point, there are people that I don't talk to for a long time. Or we might not interact for a yeah. long time, but when they call me, it might be because they had death in the family or something is going mm -hmm. on. And what's most, it, it's humbling when your friends call on you because they need prayer or when your friends call on you mm -hmm. because they need guidance or advice or a couple of, whatever it might be. But it's, it should be a blessing yes. that somebody reaches out to you in their time of need. Absolutely. But not that they're using you. I mean, now you can tell the difference between, between when somebody right. is using you. But when somebody genuine, re genuinely reaches out to you in a moment of need mm -hmm. or a point of desperation and their short list of who can I call right. the to fact help that me? They chose little old me. Ex you know, I, I don't yes. think so highly of myself Ex that I feel like. 
oh, you should have called me. No, I'm like, oh my God. Like, that is a blessing. All the people that you could have called, you called me to pray for you or you called me to cry, you know, to use as a, a shoulder to cry on. Right. So I think we need to really just change up the perspective That's when true. it comes to stuff like that. You know, like I said, I have relationships like that and I don't take it lightly. Like I, I, I say to God, like, thank you, you know, yep. and so, and sometimes the people are in a place where they, you know, you just never know what somebody going through. Like sometimes people are in such a, a hard place and you are that person that they might need to, well, God is using you to be that person to help them to get through whatever it is that they're going through. And nine mm. times out of 10, they will come back around to you and say, you know what? And, and my mind is not even thinking like, oh, I did, you know, I told I you this. I did this for you, right. And when they come back around, it's such a blessing to hear, not for you to get puffed up, but for you to say, thank you, Lord. That's right. Because I'm glad that I was obedient because there was a piece of me that wanted to be like, you only calling me when now because you need, cause you need right. something. You know what I mean? And I have gone through that. There's a, a few relationships that I have struggled with that and went to God in prayer a couple times and even times where other people notice it and might be nudging on you like, right. no, you need to, you know, stop letting them use you. But it's just something in you that's saying, no, nope, because because you know that there is a need and it's something that's holding you there. And that's nobody but God. So and don't you, even let nobody else talk you. That's out right. That. You know, because it, it reminds me of the scripture and I might uh, chop this up, but it was the parable that Jesus was telling about the man who went to his neighbor's house in the middle of the night and, you know, needed something for either his family or somebody else. And the neighbor gave it, you know, gave him what he needed. But it was the lesson around, you know, why would you turn somebody away mm -hmm. when they come to you with a need in the middle of the night? You know, would you tell them to wait until the morning more or less, you know, or would you meet that need, right. especially if you had it within your means to do at the time that they had the need? You know, good lesson about friendship, because, again, it should be humbling. Mm -hmm. One, that somebody God used you to be a blessing to that right. person. And you don't know what God might be trying to teach them mm -hmm. about their selfishness or whatever by the way that you respond. And if you respond in a godly way, you are imitating God, Ephesians 5 and but 1. But then I don't even always think that it's, some, it's selfish. It could be they just really don't have anything to give you. And I think well, when we look at it like we've all, I mean, I'm going to speak for me. I know that I've been in a place before where i've had nothing to offer a person and they give me give me give me but that's and i and i appreciate it i appreciate but that. that's what i think is is the blessing and the lesson we might think that we have nothing to give but what god teaches us is if we have nothing physical tangible to give we give them god we give them christ right. well we when give, i say no, that but, but i mean more in terms so, of giving back to, right. to 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 them the way that they give to you right. whether it's monetary i know I, I'm, I'm saying that but again and, and i because feel that no way too where we are we can always help somebody if you but yeah that, that's pray the point. for somebody that's we always have something that we can offer somebody else and there's such a blessing in that that when you have a need and you can still help somebody else. Right. You know, it's like when what, what I think it was the apostles who were talking that, to the man at the gate. You know, he says, you know, uh, silver and gold have I none, but whatever I have, what I have, I give mm -hmm. to you. So, I mean, I think that that should be like you said, you got to change. We got to change the perception yeah. around the, uh, the relationships. One, as I said, relationships are more covenantal and not um, uh, uh, consumer based, you know, or transactional. We have been trained that relationships are transactional. Even in marriages, what yeah. do you hear? 50, you get 50, 50, 50 you 80, know, no. 20, right. all that. No. That's give not transactional. Everybody give 100%. That's right. Period. And that, you might fall short some days, but you should be reaching towards you give your 100, I give my 100. Amen. And that's, you know, that's where, again, especially in, in marriages, and this is where marriages fail because marriages, as, as the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, when God created somebody comparable for him, that was for companionship. So that's the ultimate friendship. And again, marriage is a mirror of salvation. So if God came through Jesus to be that sacrificial friend to us, if we obey his commands, then the same thing is true for marriages. Mm -hmm. But where we get it wrong and screwed up is that if she don't cook, 
I'm not going to clean. If he ain't going to clean, I ain't going to pay the bill. And if I don't pay the bill, you know, it becomes transactional when it should be. Mm-hmm. How do we work this relationship for the best of the relationship? Amen. Friendship. So marriages, y'all need to, we need to stop fighting over stuff that are transactional and look at the covenant. What are we committed to mm-hmm. in this relationship? And in that commitment, I'm not worried about your commitment only when you don't do what you're committed to do. That's a conversation, but that doesn't mean that the relationship is done and over. Yeah. But how do we work through that to get the best outcome for both of us? And that is in marriages, that is in familial relationships, that is in all relationships. But one of the things that kind of sticks out to me in Proverbs eighteen twenty four is the part about a friend sticking closer than a brother. Mm-hmm. And sometimes what I pull from that is that um, our friends are closer to us than our actual family members mm-hmm. at times. And again, that not that that's wrong, but there's something wrong with that because your family should be your first unit of true friendship. And a lot of times we have friends that treat us better than our actual family members yeah. do and or, you know, are closer to us than our actual family members are. But, you know, I think that that has a lot to do with how we view what God is saying to us about how we ought to conduct ourselves. Because, again, you know, the family member piss you off or, you know, cut rub you the wrong way. Then it's that friend that I went to college with or that friend that mm-hmm. I grew up with is the person that you're venting to about the family member that is getting on your nerves Mm -hmm. or not doing what you want them to do. And then is that of what God would have Mm -hmm. you to be if you are making yourself a friend or laying down your life for that person that God said to love? But you know what? A lot of times the, the things that we do, we don't even realize really it speaks volume to your character yeah yeah. because if you're going to call your friend to talk about your family (laughs) member what are you going to do when your friend pisses you off right 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 and 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 again i i I love that because you know we we often talk about it and this and and you know because we all guilty of it and i just want to be clear that when i say talk about i mean just to like dog them out right. it's one thing if you calling your friend like hey this is going on you know with me Help and my me family with member this. how do you think i should handle this right. situation right. but not just a call like you know this jerk did blah blah, blah. no right no and that's <laughs> you know again it you 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 spot on it it speaks to our character and it, it man it just resonates in in proverbs eighteen twenty four because you know if i am showing myself to be friendly, I'm not going to dog nobody out. Family member, friend, person on the street, the person that pissed me off, whoever, because I am imitating God. God does Amen. not speak down about any of his children or creation. I don't think you'll find that anywhere in the Bible mm-hmm. where God spoke down about his creation. So why would we, if we're imitating God, do anything less than what God would do relative to relationships? And again, that is what damages or fractures relationships because Mm -hmm. one of the things i posted i think it was this or last week is you know if it don't say anything that you can't defend so if you talk about somebody or put somebody down and then it is exposed that you said it are you man or woman enough to stand up and do it but then if you are quote unquote man or woman enough to stand up to well yeah i said it but why would you say something that would put down another person that you're supposed to love according mm-hmm. to God's word? So we got to change our approach because that's what limits our ability to be friendly and to develop friendships. I think the other thing that I was going to say is when it comes to those divine connections, you know, a lot of times we block our own blessings yeah. because God will place people in your life that he knows has the qualities and characteristics or has what it is that both of you need to bless one another whether it's the receiving in or the giving in whatever he chooses to do um but sometimes we overlook people because of the way they look Mm -hmm. they don't work this place they they single i'm married you know we pick out all these little things reasons why where we try to decide why they don't measure up to being a friend to us right and, and you <laughs> today, you know, I was looking at the scripture and one of the things that stood out, because I was looking at Romans twelve fifteen, and then I just happened to read the next verse. And it's, you know, one of the things that I said is don't 
don't think that you are better than anyone. Right. You never know who or why God will may send a certain may send certain people your way. Yep. And the scripture solidified that because in Romans twelve sixteen it says, "Live in harmony with one, one another. another." Yeah. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do yep. not be conceited. Yeah. So don't think you know if you the CEO. Don't think you don't have to speak to the janitor. That's right. You know, and <laughs> you know that is also validated in uh, Proverbs eighteen. I believe it is um, verse twenty seven. You know, um, the Bible says, "Do not for it commands us." You know, do not forsake your friend. Uh, Proverbs twenty seven and ten, and you know it warns us about the you know the the fickleness. Of fair weather friends, you know, mm -hmm. or being selective around who can be our friend, you know, right. who's in my circle, or we the fly crew and we can't hang. And the you, crazy part, with, you see a lot of that in churches. Yeah, cliquish relationships, circles of you know um, mm -hmm. the elite or the better thans, and that's not what God calls us to do. Jesus hung with sinners right. and was ridiculed for that. So if Jesus hung with sinners, who do we think that we are, that we can't hang with people who don't live where we live, dress how we dress, drive Amen. what we drive, do what we do? And, you know, it's amazing that you said that the CEO um, thing, because, you know, to I God be the glory. No, I know you weren't talking about me, but no, it did, <laughs> one of my mentors a long time ago before I became a CEO um, blessed me with something, a, a message that he had shared as he was mentoring me. He says, never not treat anybody that works for your organization like gold. Mm -hmm. And he said, because I was saved in my career from the woman who empties the trash in my office. And he says, one night she was working late and she just happened to be in cleaning the office after a meeting that he was not invited to yeah. and wound up pulling something out the trash that was beneficial to him because they were trying to get rid of him. So, But he spoke to everybody in the organization, knew everybody's name. And she pulled him to the side of the older lady and said, baby, let me tell you, I found this in the trash last night and you might want to read this because this might help you and whatever you're going okay. through at work right now and he was able to take that information correct whatever the situation was and it saved him from having to deal with the situation he didn't have to because of himself sh him showing himself friendly to the quote-unquote lowest person in the organization what if he would have not said nothing to her she just came in empty the trash he never put his head up which a lot of people do right. people get caught up in those titles i learned so much from my old boss because that's the type of manager that she was she was a vp but she always spoke to the male mm -hmm. people she would you know it's so funny because other executives would come into our office and she'd be bringing me her assistant a cup of tea to my desk mm. and they would be looking at her like you making her like why are you making her tea like <laughs> but she treated me like a person like gold. not not like oh well you're just my little assistant, assistant. right <laughs> eric, no i'm a person hey eric i know you know that story because you probably heard it before from our mutual mentor but you know again as God has blessed me to be in that role, that was a nugget that I always, and not that I hadn't done that before I got the role that I'm in, but it was a blessing to me to be able to recall and remember those things because when you treat people like gold, no matter who they are, from the parking lot to the CEO room or corporate boardroom, when you treat people like gold because you're genuine about that, not that you're doing that to get anything from them, you show yourself as friendly, mm -hmm. regardless of the title. And the number one title that pleases God is servant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with what credentials, how many degrees you have. And I think, again, we use those things to separate ourselves from others in establishing good friendships. Yeah. God may be wanting to put somebody in your life that can do nothing for you, mm -hmm. but to be a blessing to you or for you to be a blessing for so that they can see who God is. And yeah. we got to be very careful about that. Like Ebony said, we can't be puffed up and selective about who we choose as friends that God is sending our way to be friendly to. And we do that, but we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can put people in their categories by how they act. Yeah. So if you act like an acquaintance, I'm going to treat you or mm -hmm. put you in a bucket as an acquaintance. If you act as somebody who's not friendly, then I will put you in the bucket you to know. be, wow. you know, uh, 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 not friendly or somebody that shows themselves to be rude or puffed up or otherwise. But if God says, Jamal, you're accountable to how you conduct yourself. 
and you must show yourself to be friendly because you are an example and a representation of me. I have no choice but to be obedient to what God says and not let how others treat me dictate who I am to them. And then I, God just spoke some to me. So I even think about it even works the other way around that relationship because I might be intimidated by their so-called title. Right. And that, you know, again, that is what God shows us. First of all, we are people. We are human beings, and that is what levels the playing mm -hmm. field. God didn't give us titles when he created us. In Genesis chapter 2, he said, let me make, it's not good that man should be alone, yeah. so let me make one that is comparable to him, which means that we're all equal. God created us as equals. He didn't create us at levels. Um, he made us different in terms of the species that he created, both male and female, yeah. <clears throat> but God never not once said that one should be higher than the other. God gave us dominion over the beast of the field and all of the animals and things that he gave us dominion over in terms of that structure. But God, as he created man, he did not create man to be elevated above each other. Yeah. So why do we walk around with an elitist attitude or thinking that we're bigger or better than somebody or that just because y'all ain't fly, y'all can't roll with us and I could talk down about y'all and make y'all right. feel less than because, you know, we wear certain labels or we do certain things or we can fly over to this part of the country at random, you know. And we do so mm -hmm. much of that where we make people feel less than. But guess what? Catch a cold. Yeah. Get sick. Have to be laid up in the hospital. All of that stuff goes out the window very mm -hmm. quickly because then you realize how human you are and how much you need people to come and visit you yeah. and or be a part of your healing process, something that you can't do for yourself. And that's the yeah. that's the, uh, the the other blessing of having good friendships, because when you are going through your lowest point, true friends show up yeah. and they don't have to show up physically. They don't have to show up, you know, in person, but by showing up. They do what friends do, provide the need that you have at that moment as a friend. And that's how you can also evaluate, you know, those who are in your life that are true friends. Like I said, I got yeah. people that I haven't talked to in years, but every time they call me, my God, it just touched your spirit mm -hmm. that you can pick right up where you left off or you can pray with one another or for mm -hmm. one another or meet a need or just, you know, just show up friendly. And sometimes showing up might just mean being there and being quiet, mm -hmm. not even saying anything, but just being available to that person and yeah. presence. You know, I, I, I was so blessed. What was that? Saturday we were outside. Or it was it Friday or Saturday um, or Sunday? It might have been Sunday after church. We were sitting around and I had um, got a message through Facebook from a friend. And she says, hey, uh, if, if you're free, call me right away. And I call and they said, listen, I don't want to go into detail, but all I need for you to do is just pray. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting out, you know, on the deck and I was having a glass of wine, just chilling. And I said, turn the music off and just pray. And I said, you know, Lord, I don't even need to know. That's what's... the other thing too. That's so key because sometimes we want to be nosy. Mm. And it's like, you know, one of my friends said that to me as well. You know, I love how you were just, just there for me and you didn't even want to know. Right. Because sometimes the person don't want to talk about it. Right. And that's okay. You God for, knows. Right. You can still pray for somebody that's without it. knowing their business. The Lord knows the prayer will still go through. He'll answer it because he knows everything. And that, you know, <laughs> to me, that was such a blessing to one. Like I said, it was humbling that I would be thought of at that time to be able to be a blessing in prayer for a friend. And like I said, in the prayer, I don't need to know because the Lord knows, but whatever it is, fix it, God, you know, or fix the circumstance or fix the person, mm -hmm. excuse me, that's going through whatever it is that's causing that situation. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, to your point, we got to be able to be that unselfish. Yeah of a friend to give them what they need because we'll get the people getting their feelings like oh well they she ain't even want to tell me what was going yeah. on so what yeah you know get so out of your what? feelings and get it into your face it don't have nothing to do with you you don't need to know what's going on and that's that's the part about walking by faith and trusting god because a lot of times again if we're imitating the lord the lord knows what to do 
And when, when people came to Jesus, Jesus always turned to the Father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is so powerful because if Jesus and who he was always diverted to or put the attention on the father even though he had the power to heal and do all of those things and he did that mm -hmm. when he needed to but in most cases when it was something that the lord was trying to teach us as a principle i think and people came to him again those whom he had called friend he demonstrated his yielding and submission to the father in yeah. his relationship that he had with those whom he called friend. So what makes us think we can be bigger than the Lord mm -hmm. and try to fix the situation ourselves? Give it to the father, but be a demonstration of what we would expect when we go to the Lord. When we go to the Lord in prayer, we pray our father who art yeah. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So when we pray that prayer, we're praying that and surrender on behalf of our friends and ourselves yeah. at the same time. And those whom we love and care for. So we have to, again, I think, shift the priority, shift the perspective, and also change our posture and how we walk this walk. Because if we're showing ourselves as friendly, we will attract friends. And it's, an, it's not about numbers, yeah. but it's about the, the quality, the, the quality of, relationship. of relationships that you have. And when you talk about the quality, I mean, it just <clears throat> brings me to this point too, because the other thing about friends is that a lot of times we want people just to make us feel good. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a true friend is somebody that also can call you out on the mm -hmm. carpet about your foolishness. And we should be receptive of that because if we really value them and know they are true, they are a true friend, then we know that they mean well. It's out of love. They Their yeah. intentions, you know, are well. And I had ran across this scripture um, probably last year and I, and I was like, <clears throat> wow. Um, Proverbs 27, 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, yep. but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So basically, if you got some foolishness going on and what you're doing is not of God, it's not right. Um, your friend, if they don't say anything, really, that's not being they don't a care good about friend you. because what that is, is that's, that's hitting, hitting, hitting. H-I-D-D-E-N, love. Right. And that does not help us. Yep. You know, if we are supposed to be able to correct one another in love and help each other be more like Christ. You know, it, it's amazing. And I, I thank God as we are even talking about this. I just feel so blessed that I can really say I have a lot of friends mm -hmm. um, because I am, you know, looking at the value of those relationships and I can look at you know, more than a handful of people, thank God, that I can call true friends um, because they don't want nothing from me but the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I don't want nothing from them but the relationship. But when we need each other for anything beyond the relationship, we're there for each yeah. other. And that is of such significance. And then, again, not anything to brag about, but in my representation i just pray that i am always a reflection of christ mm -hmm. and able to give what i have even if it's not silver and gold but whatever it is that i have i can give according to what the the, the apostle said in scripture you know and um as we were researching this what i found is that proverbs gives us wisdom for navigating the complexity of complexities of our relationships and it is replete with examples and just great wisdom that i think we can draw from that you know it and it, it doesn't just address relationships in general, but also friendships in particular. You know, Proverbs speaks particularly to friendships. For example, it teaches us what to look for in finding true friends. And you can find that in Proverbs 13 and 20, and also in uh, Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Proverbs speaks very clearly um, about that and, and can help us identify that. It also shows us why loyalty is so important for cultivating friendships because that's what breaks friendships disloyalty yeah. when i feel like you know i can't trust you or you've broken that covenant that mm -hmm. we established with one another um then that breaks the friendship and that's often you know the the deficit for <coughs> why we um can't maintain or be friendly and like we said you know it causes 
um, resentment. It causes hurt and it causes us to feel like we are, are not um, um, getting from the relationship that which we're putting in. But again, Proverbs speaks to that specifically. And it also shows us one thing that is the most damaging to this kind of relationship, which is spreading secrets. You know, where um, you have true relationships, there's secrecy, there's intimacy, there's closeness, mm -hmm. there's protection. And when, you know, I, it was a meme, and I'm trying to remember what the meme said, but it was something about, like, if you want to... Um, if you want to uh, uh, blow a friendship, tell a secret. Or tell, if you want to find out if somebody's your true friend, tell them a secret. Mm. And something to that effect. Because if your secret gets out, remember that your friend also has a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like... My you, dad be setting people up like that <laughs> on his job. He be telling them stuff that only... He, he know he told them. <laughs> just to see how... <laughs> <it. laughs> I don't know if that's biblical, but my dad do be doing that to people. No, but you know... <laughs> It, it, it's a fun. It was a funny meme when I read it, but I mean the the essence of it was you know to test the value of your friendship. Tell them a secret, mm -hmm. because every friend has a close friend, you know, and you might be a close friend with one person, mm -hmm. but then they also have a close friend. Yeah. But if you're around that other close friend and you find out that the secret that you told them was known, mm -hmm. then that ain't really a true friend because they blew that secrecy yeah. um, that you entrusted them with in your valued relationship that you have with them. And when that occurs, it's like, you know, dang, you broke our trust. You broke our loyalty. And can I really trust you as a friend? Yeah. Trust is a major component of a true friendship. And if I can't trust you, then again, you fall into one of those other categories. Mm -hmm. But we should not allow that to make us untrustworthy as a result Amen. of somebody's untrustworthiness. And that's, you know, I, I think one of the blessings that we all struggle with, you know, I know I do. And, you know, ultimately, you know, I think, um, Jesus, as I said, is the perfect. You, know, you always been, he, this guy is a trustworthy, like, trust me, if you tell him something, he not even going to tell me. And it's messed up. <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> but that's, you know, and I'm not bragging about that. I mean, I just thank God that's for that. That thing, is you that's know, something that I had to learn. I mean, if I'm honest, I had to learn that because then when it turns around and it happens to you, you like, wait a minute, you told somebody, I told you not to say that. But I, I think God uses that mm -hmm. as a tool to teach us how to do better with that. Because again, if we are, you know, um, honest, what we we don't want to happen to us what we do to other exactly. people exactly. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's that's, like, that just points right back <laughs> to the scripture be the friend that, that you, you want. want that absolutely you know and th that is when we when we don't demonstrate or reflect the behavior that we want in return mm -hmm. we are selfish you know we do it in our marriages we do yeah. it in relationships it's like oh i I'm, i want this but i'm not going to give the same thing mm -hmm. that i want back in return God uses that as a tool to teach us. No, you can, first of all, show yourself yeah. to be friendly if you want to have friends. And, you know, it, a friend wouldn't do that to another friend. Amen. Especially if you if you are expecting that as an expectation, which even you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't expect it because that's how you get hurt when people don't demonstrate what you expect. But, again, I am blessed to have friends that I can really call true friends because of what you just said. You know, and I didn't even realize that the Bible spoke to that until I had read that, um, you know, about just being having integrity, having yeah. character. And again, it doesn't speak about it never speaks about the other person. Mm -hmm. It always talks about you. These are the characteristics of, a, you know, the, yep. these Carla, are the things that's Jamal. that, you, you know, you have to um, be what you want other people to be to you, you know, and I think that that's the true thing of, of friendship. You know, there's a number of my friends that are on, on this, 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 um, thread tonight that I can call true friends, you know, and I'm not going to shout y'all out cause I don't want to miss nobody, but you know, but if we won, it's like, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> well, no. our, our friends, that's no, true. No, I'm, but that's true. I'm not talking about our friends. I'm saying like, if we won and they tell you something, no, no, that, that, <laughs> That ain't that ain't that ain't true. But you know, I I, I the, the no, but that's true though. You know, cause it people call it the guy cold and the girl cold. You know, it's just certain things that me and my girlfriends or my girlfriend might tell me something. I'm not gonna have that conversation with my husband because that's not for him. Unless they give if you she, permission if she to said, do now, so. Now I've had people come to me, especially like marital issues, and maybe the wife comes to me 
it says something to me about you know what's going on in the marriage and i always say is it okay for me to have this conversation with Jamal? Right. Not because I just want to tell him what's going on, but he may be able to talk to your husband and have that they have that male conversation and so that we can pray for y'all together. Right. And if they it, say no, then I can't be mad at that. You and, know, it's like, okay, this is just between us right now. And there's two things that I want to say about that, um, because that's that's critical. First of all, you know, that's um the importance of having Christian relationships mm -hmm. because when when you're going through whatever you're going through and you reach out to your friend you want to have people around you that are not going to side with you absolutely but you want to have people who, that are going to pray for you and with you mm -hmm. and also give you the truth in love about your situation with that i had a friend that i was talking to this weekend about his marriage mm -hmm. and i was very straightforward with him i'm not going to advocate for the deterioration of your right. relationship I'm going to tell you what God says about what commitment you made and get out of your feelings and get into your faith and focus on doing what God is telling you to do. Or you will have consequences for yeah. walking away from your marriage for the reason in which you just explained to me. And I said, you know, I am not apologizing for holding that ground with you. But that wasn't a conversation that until I had gotten permission to have yeah. with my wife about that because that was between he and I. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, again, that vault, that, that you know, uh, secrecy, people will come to you in a spiritual space and unless they give you per permission, you don't want to do that. But on the same token, there's another thing that I think is critical about friendships, especially friendships with marriages. Yeah. No one should be able to be your friend if they can't be your spouse's friend. Amen. And that's one of the things. If you can't be friends with my wife or I can't, you know, or her friends can't be friends with me, then we don't need to have a friendship. Mm -hmm. Because if there's any opportunity to uh, come in between or disrespect or demean or whatever my relationship yeah. with my wife, if we can't be mutual friends, then we can't be friends at all. Amen. And that's one of the things that I think marriages have to... Um, protect the integrity of your marriage through friendships because I've you know seen a number of posts on on Facebook where they say you know he's friends with her and they're having you know inside jokes and inappropriate this yeah. and that and all but it's causing relationship challenges mm -hmm. with me well again if we can't have that same inside right. joke you might not understand all of the context but here's the explanation right and you know now that's why we laugh it's not anything against you but if i can't have that conversation with her then guess what i shouldn't be having that conversation with her right. or another person so we have to learn how to make sure that friendships yeah. don't damage our ultimate friendship particularly those of us who are married and have a covenant relationship with our spouse that should supersede every other relationship that you have in your life, even Amen. with your children. And I wanted to make sure that we, we talked about that because that was something that, again, through maturity, you learn. Mm -hmm. And you apply that and you hold fast to that because you can understand, looking back, how some of that may have damaged your relationship, even with your family members. Right. You know, you shouldn't have inside jokes with your family right. members about your, your spouse. And no other person should be coming to you telling you something going on with your husband or your wife. And right. You don't, even you don't know, know about, about it. it. Right. And <laughs> it, but because, again, that goes to that that secret piece. You know, what is secret should be shared with that which is sacred. Mm -hmm. The sacredness of your best relationship is through your marriage. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your salvation with Christ. John um, 15, um, what is it? John 15, 13 is, you know, the epitome of the relationship where Jesus said, greater love have no man than this, no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. That is the ultimate demonstration of, of, of friendship. And Jesus gave us that example on the cross. And that's what we ought to demonstrate in our relationships with others. You know, if we have a friendship with someone, we would be willing to lay down our lives mm -hmm. for them. And Jesus came to save the world. So he not only laid down his lives for his life for a specific group of people, but he laid down his life so that everyone, even people who don't appreciate him yeah. for what he did, he came and died for them too. The choice is ours, who we allow to be our friends, but we should never allow ourselves to show ourselves as unfriendly if we are walking this Christian walk the way that the Lord would have us to. Amen. Amen.
this has been, I mean, I, I love this conversation tonight. I mean, I don't know what, um, why God laid that on my heart over the weekend to have that as a topic this week. But I just realized that, you know, there are a lot of struggling relationships and friendships. And as a result, you know, we can do better. And I, I just pray that tonight was a blessing to all of us. And um, again, please share this. It's going to be posted on our Facebook pages and um, on YouTube and on Instagram as well. But, you know, if you know somebody struggling with a, a, a relationship issue, share this. And I pray that some of the scriptures that we shared, that you would truly uh, investigate them, mm -hmm. pin them to your heart and use them as you start to see how God wants to use you to be friendly to somebody else, to show them who he is. Amen. And two things I just wanted to say, because this has been on my mind for a long time. Well, the second thing I'm going to say been on my mind. But the first thing is when you say you're going to pray for somebody, just stop and do it. It don't yeah. have to be long and drawn out. If you don't do nothing amen. to say, help so-and-so, Lord. Amen. That's it. Like, because a lot of times we all have been guilty of it. I'm, oh, I'm praying for you. Oh, I'll pray for it's you. It's cliche. You know, just because it's the thing to say. But no, really stop and pray. And even sometimes... Stop and pray with them, mm -hmm. not even just for them. But you don't know. That makes a world of difference for mm -hmm. somebody. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, this is the other thing that we, we say to people, and we all are guilty of this. I know I am. Let me know if it's anything that I can do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to think about if you were in that person's shoes, what is it that you would need? What mm -hmm. is it that you might need? And even if you don't really know, but you just... Pray about, Lord, show me something that I can do. It can be something real insignificant, real small. It don't have to be huge. The fact that you took the time mm -hmm. to do something for that person shows them that you can. That you can. Because sometimes right. That's people right, Carla. are going through stuff and they really don't have the time to stop and tell you, well, I need such a... Or they 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 mind is just not even there where they can where they even can figure out what it is they need. Right. So just do something. Just do it. And and you know it's funny I didn't even get to this but I wanted to mention you know the one of the um, premier relationships in the Bible was between uh, Jonathan and David, and Jonathan Jonathan and David had such a close relationship that. Jonathan went against his father's wishes to be David's friend because they had a soul connection mm -hmm. and they had a soul tie soul, and, 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 and their said. souls were knitted together. Mm -hmm. And Saul was so jealous of David because of the anointing that he had on his God had on his life that it was really a blessing to Jonathan yeah. to be supportive of him because of the vision that God gave Jonathan mm -hmm. in connecting him to his soul that David needed his friendship yeah. in order to get to the place that God had anointed him to be. And and the point that I, I make with that and say with that is sometimes God will place a friend in your life for the purpose of his kingdom and not for the purpose of anything else. Yeah. And you may have to disobey a relationship that you have with somebody significant in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't know who needs to hear that, but God may have you walk away from a relationship that is significant in your life because of that person's jealousy mm -hmm. of the person that you are friends with that has an anointing on their life to do what God has called them to do. And because of that, you are fulfilling a greater purpose by trying to show them your soul connection to that person that God has placed in your life versus valuing or overvaluing the relationship that you have with that person. Yeah. So be very careful about that. Think about that. I know that that's kind of heavy, but in 1 Samuel 18, read that scripture because it talks about a relationship that was phenomenal between two men of God mm -hmm. and, and, and how, again, Jonathan went, went against his father to honor his relationship with David yeah. because of David's purpose and being connected to somebody with purpose. Oh my, I, I'm, I'm going to stop there because I'm getting ready to get excited. But that is such a blessing to me, um, uh, their relationship, how their souls were knitted together and how they were such a blessing to each other. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. Um, this has been phenomenal. We got to run, but let us pray out. And, and we definitely look forward to, to, to um, meeting with you next week. Lord willing for our next conversation. Actually, we might um, have to shift to Mondays um, because of commitments on Wednesday nights and the kids getting back to school. So look for us to be uh, before you, Lord willing, on Monday night instead of Wednesday night um, starting next week or the following week maybe. But we'll, we'll let you all know um, so that we can have our next conversation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight's conversation. 
We thank you for your Holy Spirit using us and speaking through us, Lord God. We know that we are not equipped to handle your word, Lord God, but we just thank you for the scripture and the spirit and the ability to share what we know in our frail state to be a blessing to other people, Lord God, but let it first, and it has been a blessing to us. And we just thank you, God, for teaching us so that we might share. And we are not experts, God, but we also learn. And we pray that others have learned, and this has been a blessing on the lives uh, of others, Lord God, about how to be friendly first so that then we can have friends, Lord God, and value the true essence of a friendship, Lord God, not to push people away, but to be more like you so that we might draw more people in. And Lord God, allow us to grow in friendships, Lord God, and not just grow in friendships in numbers, yes. but grow in friendships in maturity, Lord God, so that we can, again, show the world who you are by being imitators of you and demonstrating your love and operating in the commandments which you've commanded us to, to live, Lord God, so that if we do what you say and do what you command, that you would call us friend, Lord God, and any friendship is no more important than the one that we have with you. And we just want to be called friend by you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for everything. And we pray for all of the families here. We pray for all who were on with us tonight and all who will watch at whatever leisure time that they have to watch, Lord God. But we pray that it would be a blessing ultimately. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. We love y'all. And again, um, have a great night. See y'all next week. Take care.